What happens when one child holds on to his small dream? Well, that dream grows with him. Through the course of time, one learns to expand his horizon further than his own imagination. Professor Joseph Bassa, the director of the Silliman University Band, is a perfect example of one who embodies this trait. Professor Joseph Bassa has been conducting the Silliman University Band for 28 years now. During that time, the band has had countless concerts from audience in Silliman and even in other parts of Visayas and Mindanao. For a quiet type like Professor Bassa, his dreams unexpectedly grew bigger than what he planned to achieve at first. Born into a family with 11 children, Professor Bassa never had the privileges some kids had. When I studied music and wanted to be a director of a band, just maybe 20 or 25 members, that was my dream. That was my dream. That's all about it. Just a small one, a small band. I never dreamed of handling a band that is quite big, like in Foundation, for example, I had around 75 members. And when I came to Siliman, I, I was able to have more than 100 members. Mm -hmm. I never dreamed of even handling the Siliman band. They were forced by poverty to stop schooling for a while and help their father harvest shrimps whenever they were in season. This never became an obstacle for him. He was a consistent honor student in his entire six years in elementary and graduated valedictorian in high school at the Good Shepherd's Fold Academy, an orphanage and a school in Guimaras, Iloilo. When I first saw the holiday, I saw an orchestra no, playing during our fiesta, one of our fiestas in the barrio. Mm -hmm. And I saw that trombone being played. I was not, uh, I was not attracted to the other instruments. I was really uh, attracted to the trombone. Mm -hmm. That started his love affair with music. During my third year uh, high school, that was uh, the year when some of uh, very uh, old instruments, second-hand instruments, came from the States, donated to the orphanage. And I was one of those who uh, volunteered to study the trombone. Mm -hmm. And from then on, I became interested in music, even during my childhood. His pure talent drove him to Silliman under a scholarship from the director of his high school with a deal that he would come back to teach. And without any hesitation, of course, I, I accepted the offer and I was sent here bringing along the trombone that I was playing during, mm -hmm. during my high school. During his sophomore year in college, he met Dr. Albert Ferro the founder of the Men's Glee Club. Dr. Faro became his benefactor and bought him a trombone which he used until he graduated. After getting a degree of Bachelor in Music major in composition in 1973, he fulfilled his promise to his school. He returned with his wife on the same year. It wasn't quite a fairy tale for the newlyweds as they braced through the lack of financing from the school. With the advice of one of the school's faculty members, the couple went back to Dumaguete in search for greener ground. It was a tough decision for Professor Bassa, knowing that he could never repay the orphanage for what it has contributed to his life. He found himself in Foundation University. The university quickly noticed his talent and increased his pay almost every semester. However, this was quite short-lived. So, for one semester, I didn't have any work, I didn't have any job. I have to go to Manila and join some uh, bands there and play in some uh, nightclubs. <laughs> but it was hard. It was hard. We were hoping that we can go out of the country with my group there in Manila. But, uh, I'm not really for me. Or maybe luckily for me, uh, I decided to come back to, Sil uh, to Dumaguete and apply to Sil In the summer of 1985, he was finally accepted. 
He became a part-time faculty of the School of Music and Fine Arts and handled the band at the same time. After just one semester, he got promoted to full-time faculty member, but being full-time wasn't that easy. The same year, the vision of turning the Silliman Band from a mere marching band into a concert band took shape. With only 29 novice band members and a lack of instruments and equipments, Professor Bassa was faced with a challenge. Back in 1985, instruments then were very, very old, uh, not, not uh, well maintained, mm -hmm. and uh, I have to do some repairing myself. They had to turn the shower room of Guy Hall into their first band room. But this didn't stop him from achieving his dream of conducting even a small band. After two years of training, they were able to perform for the first time as a concert band in the Luce Auditorium in 1987. Being with a band, with a band of young people, it keeps me young also. <laughs> He also became the Dean of the College of Performing and Visual Arts for 10 years, from 2001 to 2010. I never dreamed of even handling the Silliman Band. And uh, also the Silliman University Church Covenant Choir. I never dreamed of that. Mm -hmm. And to become a Dean also of the College of Performing Arts and uh, Performing and Visual Arts, I, that never entered my mind. Mm -hmm. but, that came, and uh, responsibilities, I don't, you know, I don't uh, turn my back on those. Mm -hmm. uh, all, all these things that happened to my life, <clears throat> I know, <clears throat> it's God's plan. Some are dreamers, some are doers, few are both. Before retiring this March, Professor Joseph Bassa will leave two legacies, his son, Joseph Albert Bassa will take his place as the director of the band and the Joseph Bassa Scholarship Fund that will continue on helping music students fulfill their dreams just like him. I am Claire Tubil and this is Silliman Documentary. But for now I